the, those three rich questions. I want to begin with the, the gender one, because for those who heard it, it was a Radio 5 live interview that you had, I believe, yesterday, where you ended on a very emotional note about this question, about the fact that people coming to your lectures are, are roughly 80% men, and often men under sort of 35 or so, saying how much, thanking you deeply for sort of recognizing the, them and the challenges they're facing. Um, but there are also those who feel the mood music is somehow wrong, that somehow this is, hasn't caught up with the last 50 years of gender emancipation and so forth, and there's slightly too much fixation on men and, and, and women being somehow, their, their, their mode in life is to attract a suitable mate, and that comes up a lot in the book, by the way. Um, so how do you feel about the gender question? Why are, why are men particularly drawn to your work, and to what extent uh, can you maybe redress the balance a little bit in terms of what people are hearing? Well, it isn't obvious to me why men particularly are drawn to my work. It might just be a side effect of YouTube, for all I know, because YouTube is where I put my lectures, and YouTube is primarily men. Now, why that is, I don't know any more than I know why Tumblr is primarily women. So it could be just a sample bias, as far as I can tell, but maybe it's not. Maybe there's something that men are more desperate for at the moment than women, and I think that's probably true, because I think that men are in a more existential more in a state of existential crisis than women are. And it's partly because it's kind of obvious what women should do. You know, it's like, well, yeah, they should have a career and have a family. It's like, well, that'll keep you busy, especially between the ages of 20 and 35. It's right. like, that's enough, man, to try to get those two things right. And, and you have to do it before you're 35. And, so why, it's, what, and it's different for men because... Well, men don't have to do it before they're 35. So just age-wise? just the, the Yeah, but it's not just. I mean, age kills you. It's a big deal. You know, and like you can have a family when you're 60 if you're a man. So you can sit around in your mother's basement till you're 40 and you still have a chance of flourishing. Not much of one, but still some. <laughs> you know, so w women, are, women are in a much tighter time frame. And, and, and so I think that they're, they're quite oriented towards action in the world and quite, and quite desperately oriented. And, you know, that's a catastrophe because it's desperation, but it also right. gives them purpose, that's right. for sure. Right. And then with regards to the gender question more broadly, it's like there seems to be this idea that if I'm concentrating on strengthening masculinity, uh, I would uh, say rather uh, than yeah, men, yeah. by the way, just to be properly postmodern about it, sure. um, well done, well done. that in some sense I would be doing women a disservice. It's like, what, what the hell no, is no, that supposed no, to mean? No, I don't think know? it's disservice. It's something about people's perception of tone. Are you just saying that's just the way it is, that actually that's more an issue with the hearer than the speaker? Because I, I've heard a lot of people say the same thing, which is that, uh, you speak very forthrightly and clearly about masculinity. You connect it to the logos. You speak about order and chaos and the masculine principle being the kind of ordering and the chaos being the feminine. And you know, people read that today and go, are you sure? Oh, that's yes, a bit controversial. That's a good, okay, that kind yeah. of thing. Well, I think part of it too is this, that we don't have a good mythological pattern for, for modern femininity. Right. Because modern females aren't like females 200 years ago right. because they got control of the reproductive function. And so there isn't a deep mythos for a modern woman because there have been no women in history that got control of the reproductive function. You might say, well, what is a woman who has control of her reproductive function like? And the answer to that is, we don't have a clue. Right. It's only been around for 50 years. Right. So, well, so what's the ideal for femininity? Well, you know, that's part of the culture wars. We right. don't know. Okay. 